on work, life in the workplace. Be right with you, Ding Yuan. Just gonna check out some other. Oh, I'm not even speaking to you. My apologies. I understand how you must feel. Stay calm. Let's wait for the news. Calm. Oh, these are uniforms. Cause there's much. There are several people wearing the purple, or is it just the same as the green and the the burnt orange? That's just personal choice. I don't know. Cause these guys are wearing them as well. Dozens are still left behind in several shipyards. Please send in cloud knights to help the evacuation. Grela, architect. Hello, Grela. Those old short-sighted Xianjia fogies are really infuriating. They only see Xianjia instead of looking at the whole galaxy. It's quite the disappointment. Xianjia should be doing great things. Uh, do you want to be more specific? What are you looking at me for? I'll criticize Xianjia if I want, even if I do happen to work for the Skyfaring Commission. I'm all for that. Please continue. <laughs> You're all for that. You don't even know what I'm for yet. Still, I appreciate the sentiment. My negotiation with Shenzhou focus didn't go well at all. Where are you even from? I'm Architect Grela. I came to Shenzhou for the future of the galaxy. So did you think you were going to get a better reception by dressing like them? You don't look like a local, so let me tell you. You can't count on Shenzhou. Would you stop making me say that word? I still don't know that I'm pronouncing it correctly. Those all because I know that X I O A O Shao, which means little, is one syllable. But I'm pretty sure that Xian is two. And then Jiu is one. So it should be Xian Jiu. But Chinese is not a strong suit. So I'm only assuming I'm pronouncing it. And I don't know. They all say Xian, like there's no H. But again, I'm only going off my shall pronunciation and maybe the O as opposed to an N changes the pronunciation and you drop the H. I don't know. So <laughs> unless one of you guys is fluent in Chinese and can explain that syllable to me, I'm going to continue to pronounce it Xianzhou. Also pointing out that this episode's going to air like two, three weeks after I actually record it. So I'm going to continue to calling it Xianzhou, even if you correct me on this uh, episode because I'm gonna pre-record an episode. You know what I mean. <laughs> Anywho, back to Grela. Those old geezers can barely see what's in front of them, let alone that the whole galaxy is in trouble. The galaxy is in trouble? Do tell. Any party concerned with the existence of the galaxy, capitalized, would voluntarily respond to the call of preservation and protect the citizens threatened by the anti metal Ah, that's what you're referring to. However, Xianzhou ignores this duty despite possessing great power. They keep reiterating, Xianzhou has a plan, as if vague platitudes could solve problems. I hate vague platitudes. They annoy me so much. So you're educating Xianzhou about what to do? It's just Xianzhou's way of declining politely. Xianzhou is truly selfish. I don't... I'm only seeing one side of the story. I don't really know their approach. I'm just going to say this. Decline? Why would they decline preservation? Uh, which god, question mark, does the Luofu follow? Um, Balabog was preservation, I think, wasn't it? I don't know. I can't tell the difference between any of these uh, names. <laughs> so who do they follow here? Are you familiar with Xianzhou's past? Throughout their long history, Xianzhou suffered crisis after crisis, but every time, instead of learning from history, they only became more arrogant, thinking they will always be able to protect themselves. You have a very interesting perception of history. I wonder if a Xianzhou citizen would uh, feel the same way as you. And interesting that everyone's shortening it to Xianzhou. What happened to the Lofu? Is that not the full name of the place, or do we just get lazy and only say the first part instead of the second part? The way people call it just America instead of the United States of America, is it kind of like that? What does Liofu even stand for, if it's not the case? I digress. Excuse me for getting riled up. Oh, was my, my, was my voice acting supposed to be riled up? <laughs> I'm just mad at how stubborn they are. How about we talk about something else instead? Just a chat, right? Sure, though I can tell you as much about preservation if you're interested. I can tell you as much about... Mm, I don't know. Well, we can talk about other topics, of course. Um, what did you see them about? 
You look like someone who gets around. You've seen the destructive antimatter legion, right? They threaten every sentient creature in the galaxy. Shandu should be contributing every technology they have to the cause of preservation. I was already being subtle, yet they mock me. What do they, you say to them? Shandu has tried to cover up reality with sentiments and myths. You should face the truth and see who truly defends the galaxy. I heard Shandu is cruising the galaxy for revenge against abundance. Still seeking their revenge in this day and age? I just don't understand it. What did abundance ever do to this ship? And why are they seeking revenge for it still after presumably time has passed? So many questions you're giving me, Grela, and absolutely no answers. You're just confusing me. Uh, also, is the Shantia Luafu moving? Is the ship constantly shifting location or does it stay in the one place so everybody knows how to find it and visit it? Inquiring minds wish to know. They're too arrogant to supply the fellow Earth technology, whatever that is. Purchase the architect's fortifications, or let architect's garrison there. Xiangdu is too confident, and they're going to cause... That's going to cause some big problems. Have you always been doing this sort of work? Promoting for preservation has always been my calling. <clears throat> How do you earn an income from that? Xiangdu isn't my first stop, and it won't be my last. Before Shandu, where are you from, by the way? I visited a planet and persuaded the people there to buy a complete fortification system and made their planet an impregnable fortress. Of course, it would come at the expense of blocking out all sunlight, but that's a small price for safety. What? You do know that the Fragmentum can get through that shit, right? Unfortunately, it's hard for the myopic to discern the meaning of long-term benefits and necessary sacrifice, so that planet was utterly destroyed in the end. Oh... She just casually says that, like an entire planet didn't just die. If I insisted, perhaps they wouldn't have faced destruction. Thus, I must persuade Xianzhou to look beyond their stubborn ideas. Uh-huh. Right. Kind of feeling like this is more of a you problem, Grela. I didn't expect this from an architect. Have you met any of the other architects? Well, it's nothing new. Many people have realized preservation's importance and joined. The preservation foresaw destructive threats to the galaxy and used its majestic power to keep building the wall. Architects are just ordinary people who wanted to contribute to the preservation's endeavor of preventing doom. Unlike Shanto, we architects keep our eyes on the future as well as the present. You should join us if you feel the same way. I can sense preservation's power in you. Are you one of us already? <laughs> Yes, but no. I guess we're destined to meet. Praise the Amber Lord. Keep up the good work. I must be going now. All right. I have other issues to discuss with them, and I won't give up. Wow, Grela, you're positively enlightening and absolutely perplexing, and you gave me more questions than you answered. But hey, thanks. Zhao Kong Plow 6 is overloaded. Capacity will take a hit. Evacuated to other docks ASAP. Um, so I'm literally stuck on you. So, no, I'm not stuck on you. I just can't go that way. My apologies. I thought I was stuck on him, but I couldn't go over the orange ground. Yunning, Guild Amicassida. Okay. You've got the same outfit as the dude who was wearing the black and the burnt orange, just in a different color. Summary of the Chronicles of. No, sir. I want to put it was over there, but okay. Little one. Bruh. I've got a bat and I'm not afraid to use it. What are you doing here? Is this something you're allowed to touch? Who are you again? How dare you ask who I am? That just doesn't matter. You're not allowed to touch Madame Yukong's things. Oh, he did interact me with me touching that. Good thing no one saw. Hurry up and put it down. I'm Yunming, a Celestial Guild envoy attached to the Sky Faring Commission. Celestial Guild. So guilds are different to commissions. You can consider me half a maritime of trade officer. What do you mean half an officer? How was one half an officer? Previously, I followed the Merchant Guild and was dispatched to other star systems for about 150 years. He's human, right? So how is he long living? I thought it was the species in particular that were long living, not just everybody on the planet. Why is a human living this long? If there's something you want to know, feel free to ask me and don't touch stuff without permission. What's a merchant guild? I don't know how many merchant guilds you've heard of. Does the Whistling Flames guild ring any bells? The intergalactic merchant guild that Ting Yun is in. No, she hasn't given us that name. Never heard of it. 
I was hoping for too much then, but since you're an outworlder, if you wish to engage in mutual trade with Shenzhou, you should at least understand the workings of Shenzhou's intergalactic merchant guild. The Whistling Flames Guild that Tingu works for got in bed with the trade delegations. Got in bed makes it sound so seedy and sordid and bad. With the trade delegations in 16 worlds and turned the Grand Fair into an intergalactic festival. So clearly you're saying this is a good thing. But saying someone got into bed with somebody else is not usually a good thing? <laughs> Rough. I dare say that girl is the next in line to succeed Madame Yukong. I think Madame Yukong would disagree with that sentiment, but hey, I'm all for it. Tingu's sweet. Hence lie. I'm boring you with all this rambling. No, you're educating me. However, long live your species. When you get older, you tend to lecture on like a lead teacher. Why is you? Why are you? I just don't know why you're long lived. Are you a different breed of human than I am? It's so bizarre. My attitude was a little rough, so I want to make it up by giving you this. Oh, okay. Thanks. But let me emphasize that if there's anything you want to know, just ask me instead of touching things. Okay. Is there anything else you can answer for me? Best regards. The outworlders are getting shrewder when trading with Xianzhou. It's you. Is there anything you'd like to ask me? Go ahead. I'll mull it over and tell you what I can. Oh my word. <laughs> Bro, how old are you? <laughs> I know you're over 150. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you I'm old enough. The specific age isn't important. Whether it's in the hundreds or thousands, I, it will still sound ancient to you. I mean, that's a fair point. Anything over a hundred sounds old. Uh, yeah. Let me give you some advice. Never ask a girl on Xianzhou that question, or in any world for that matter. I mean, I don't take offense at that question. I look younger than I am. I dare say I act younger than I am. So, <laughs> I'm completely unbothered. If you'd like to know, sir, I'm almost 33. <laughs> Just in case you wanted to know. <laughs> uh, what do you do here? Simply put, I'm in charge of relaying orders from the sky. I want to say sky. Because fairing follows, so I wouldn't like to put the A with the, the SK sound, and in my sky always sounds really weird. <laughs> sky fairing commission to the guilds and passing guild requests back. The Celestial Guild is not one big body, but a consortium of smaller guilds. Many smaller guilds. So I help both sides communicate with each other. Sounds super boring again, but hey, you live your best life, dude. However, oh, several centuries back. 150 years, he says. Now he says several centuries. This guy is over 200 years old. Whew. I was captain of a trade ship. Centuries before... This guy is at least 400 years old. Oh my word. Centuries before that, I was a business professor in a lyceum. Whatever that is. Never mind, they're just jobs. The more experienced you are, the more you realize that how serious you treat a job is how serious it treats you. That's, yeah, that's fair advice. Man, you get older by the second, about the guild. Ever since the calamities ended and the Lofu settled down, guilds have been Xianzhou's lifeblood. Some of them are government-backed and some are purely civilian. Ting Yun is the head representative of the Intergalactic Merchant Guild, Whistling Flames. She's witty and a great communicator. She was born to do business. Have you heard of the Grand Fair of Xianzhou? Ting Yun turned that into an intergalactic festival. Yeah, you told me before, but I suppose that was a separate con conversation that related to me touching Yukong's things. Sea of fiery lights illuminate the countless suburbs, while feasts and songs unveil nights of innumerable glows. Nicely done. Pardon me for getting off tangent, but you probably realize how vital the guilds are now. I actually thought the commissions were more vital, but hey, I'll take your word for it. About Madame Yukong. You could say Madame Yukong is my boss. Her competence is undeniable, but her flexible adaptability to different situations is even more impressive. I didn't feel any of that flexibility when she was talking to me. Although she claimed to be lacking in trade acumen, I beg to differ, as she could often shut schemers and opportunists down without a word, and few managed to play in with words before her. To me, the end is the same even when the approach is not. The negotiations go a lot smoother with Madame Yukong present. That's all. I'll take my leave now. Sure. Have a nice day. Thanks, Yan Ming. Hi, Yukong. Uh, what are we collecting? Records of Yellow Bell Resonance, whatever that is. Please invite my head Seeing as the off. general gave the order, the Skyfaring Commission will lend you our full support. Yay! The Stellaron Hunter investigation is in your hands now. I'll issue you a pass so you can access the facilities around Starskiff Haven. As for personnel, the Skyports are currently all under maintenance, so we're thinly stretched. 
What I can do is send Ting Yun as your guide. She'll take care of you during your stay. Thanks. I appreciate that. All right, we've got even more people to socialize with. Nope, just steal your shit. That works for me. Love for Skyfaring Commission. Oh, hold on. Could I interact with this? Dendronet. The Tian Tian Plum Blossom Bro. What the fuck was that? Occasionally we hear the workers at the Palace of Astrum talking about the green plants when the plants are actually blue. I want the first sentence back. Son of a bitch. Projection sand pit. The workers of the Palace of Astrum use a sandpit to play war chess among uh, after work, and Yukong is the most excellent player among them. The game will lose all its fun when your opponent is Yukong. <laughs> Uh, it looks interesting. Can I play? I'd be happy to learn the rules. Hi. I'll get back to you. I can't interact with any more of this shit. Okay. Do you have anything else to say, Jing Yuan? I've heard of you. The Alliance is very interested in the Astral Express. About Blade. Blade is wanted by both the Corporation and the Alliance. I am aware. I'm afraid I cannot comment on his file. Kafka? There are five known members of the Stellaron Hunters. Oh, Elio. Elio is the leader, That's but the always stays behind the scenes. Most of the operations are led by Kafka. Wait, who's the fifth? Elio, Kafka, Silverwolf, Blade. Who's the fifth? Had the Divination Commission not intercepted her encrypted transmission, she would have remained undetected for much longer. Hey, 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 you said five members. I expected you to list the five members. Who's the fifth? Am I the mystery fifth? Who's the fifth? Once we catch the seller and hunter. Bring her to us. Kafa is good at controlling the people around her. Hmm. Ordinary means may prove futile when it comes to this individual. But the Divination Commission has ways of... Oh, I'm perfectly aware of that, sir. I already know that your divination commission is the secret agenda of the torture committee. <laughs> Don't misunderstand me. The Sienjo does not engage in torture. <laughs> Retrieving intel does not necessarily involve the use of violence. Potato, potato. Torture doesn't necessarily mean violence, Ding Yuan. I'm perfectly aware of that. In any case, you can deliver her directly to us. Once we learn something... I will share every piece of information with you. I doubt it, but thanks. Bye! If things go as planned, I would love to find the time to sit with all of you and hear about your experiences among the stars. My responsibilities to the Xianzhou have meant that I haven't had the chance to travel in many years. I can't tell if I can trust him or if he's just pulling my leg. We had heard nothing of the Express for a long time. It is heartening to learn of its continued journey along that starward track. I have other matters to attend to. Goodbye for now. Bye. Oh, he does actually disappear. I thought he was just gonna stand there and snub me, but no. Okay. Si Qui. Si Qui? Hellmaster Secretary. Please say your name to me. Oh, it's right, she doesn't speak. Management strategy for reporting Starskift traffic, check. Safety inspection guide, check. The life satisfaction survey for the new Outworlder batch, check. Documents are in order. Now to confirm a schedule for the meeting. So I'm just looking at her outfit. Okay, it's not my favorite, but I don't dislike it. Hmm, there's still time. The relevant documentation for the Alchemy Commission's medicinal exports requires confirmation from the purposes in charge. Also, souvenir bag orders from the merchant guilds should have arrived. I'll send someone to pick them up later. Okay, we have a third commission. Alchemy. Hmm? What is it, young lady? You've been staring at me for a while. How may I help you? What are you busy with? I am... <laughs> uh, I just... Really... What are you busy with? I am Madame Yukong's secretary. You see what I mean with the females? We have Yukong, Tingyun, and now we have... A female secretary. Feels pretty reminiscent of Leeway. Charged with handling much documentation. I won't go into detail about my job scope. You're not really interested in arranging work and pouring over corporate files, are you? Hold on. I remember you. An important guest of Shandu, General Ding Yuan's appointed to saviour. From the perspective of an insignificant secretary, you're a major character. 
Ooh, am I really that important? General Jingyuan's appointed savior. What are you up to, love Jingyuan, with such praise? Ooh. More than you think, I can assure you. All right, all right, I've got business to attend. Attend do. Mm-hmm. See the pile of work here? Uh, no, I don't. I still want to clock off work on time. It was fun teasing you. See, so here's a small gift for you. If there's something else, I'm getting back to work. See, this is why you talk to people. They give you shit. <laughs> Do not apply that knowledge to, to the real world. I meant in this game and Genshin. I want to talk to you some more. I get it. You want to know more about me? Fine, ask away. Have you always been this... I read that sweet tongue. I wonder how many have been struck down by your glibness, young lady. Uh, no one, because my trailblazer is usually quite silent. <laughs> then again, I've always been looks. confident in my looks, which is why I believe your words are sincere. Oh, were they? <laughs> what do you know? Thank you. And you're very cute too. Totally my style. Ooh, she quays. Uh, she's, she's hitting us up. About work. Stop asking about what I do in detail. I'm not going to report my work to someone other than Madame Yukong, and that is a very good attribute to have. But I'll tell you a principle I stick to at work. Leaving work on time. Yeah, I am so on board with that. Overtime? Absolutely not. Work with maximum efficiency while at work, but the moment I punch out, I turn work mode off. Exactly. So many people dwell about work once they're off the clock. Nice. My previous co-worker um, used to do that. She would stress about work when she's at home. She would take her work home with her. It's like, no, you're not getting paid. Stop. Cut it off. Just look around the sky faring commission. Many love working over time to prove their efforts. They refuse to get off on time, preferring to dawdle away till late at night. They even think themselves hard working. Nah, I call that not having a life outside of work. And that's kind of sad. Me, I'm different. I'll finish up my tasks in a jiffy and I'm gone when it's time to leave. Leaving on time and sleeping early are girl's best friends to look looking good. She is not wrong. I totally resonate with you with you, Shikwe, I'm not really into you, but we can be BFFs. About Madame Yukong. Madame Yukong, she's the best boss I've ever met. You've only seen what she's like when she's working, strict and serious. She's actually quite adorable and private. I've even received dresses gifted by Madame Yukong. I have to say, her taste is impeccable. I frequently wear those dresses of hers when I go out. Also, my looks regularly invite trouble from persistent men who don't know their place. It's time like these that Madame... Yukong is so dependable. If you ever harass Shikwe again, I won't just eject you out of the Skyfaring Commission, and I'll also flush you off Liofu. Honestly, when I first cast my eyes on Madame Yukong, my heart skipped a beat. Oh, she's toast taken. I don't have anything else to say. Bye. I want to collect this book that I just saw. If I can get to I can't get to it that way, my bad. On travel, presenting gifts. Did I miss any books on top of... Nope. Okay. March. What do you make of this, Chung Yuan? He's interesting. He's pretty handsome. Trustworthy. Suspicious. I don't trust him. I think he's great, but I think he has alternative motives. You think everyone's suspicious. Though they do say some girls have a sixth sense. Hey, thinking everybody's suspicious may just serve you one day, March. He's much easier to talk to than that Yukong. Their attitudes are so that's different. That's because he wants something from us, but Yukong Maybe doesn't. Maybe that's why she's only a helm master and he's a general. No, I think that's completely irrelevant. They've got two different fields of work entirely. Uh, he's with the guards and she's with the commission. So, a commission. Yes, the commission. So, no, that doesn't pertain to that situation. But, again, he has an agenda. He wants us to bait out the Stellaran Hunters. Yukong doesn't want to use us. She wants to do it herself. That's why their attitudes are so different. Plus, you know, different people and all that. Oh, that's it. Bye. Is Tingyun gonna join us out here? Master Diviner, Thank you Jin. heard our discussion. What do you make of it? What do I make of it? The way of heaven is apparent, but the heart of humanity is often deceptive. Are you asking me to divine their true intentions? Fu Xuan. So you of the diviner commit, okay? Yep. That won't be necessary. The crew has nothing to do with the incident. Of that, I am almost certain. It isn't their intentions that trouble me. All I want is for them to lure out the one we're after. Wasn't that my idea, General? 
can we get her? I'm going to assume we can get her as a character at some point because she wouldn't have such a unique design if she weren't a collectible character. Indeed. Your counsel has always been a great help to me. You may use your discretion on the matters ahead of us. <laughs> Why don't you retire early and I use my discretion full time? <laughs> it is still too soon, unfortunately. If something goes wrong, you'll need a general to take the blame. <laughs> How could I simply walk away and put you at such risk? He's amusing. I quite like him. But, sir, you're a fighter. How can you see through those that, that fringe? It's quite literally in your face. How are you supposed to see in combat? If you'd brought me that blade earlier, none of this would have been necessary. Wait, what are you up to exactly? Xin Yuan, did you let him escape on purpose? Yeah, to use his bait to catch Kafka. Me? <laughs> I had no idea he might escape. <laughs> Unlike you, my gaze never travels beyond the horizon. I take full responsibility. The Cloud Knights failed in their duty. I can understand. There's a lot to take care of on the Xinzhou. You are bound to miss something. Thank goodness I'm here. I mean, it is hard to tell her color palette because she's a hologram and she's a bit blue. But her eyes are super pretty and I like her makeup around her eyes. I mean, there's only two characters now that I've said that about in this entire game. And it was Yukong's eyes. Yes, Yukong, not thinking. Y yeah, Yukong's eyes. And now Fu Xuan's eyes. Everyone else is a really ugly, but their eyes are beautiful. On that note... Perhaps it's about time you finally nominate me as your successor when the Six Charioteers next convene. Yes, yes, yes. I have to go now. I'll leave this in your overwhelmingly capable hands, Fushen. Why would she want to be a general? She'd have to, like, fight. <sighs> there are three things in the world that I can't seem to rid myself of. The troubles of the Sienjo, the papers on my desk. In the weeds in my garden. <laughs> general, Diviner Fu wants the general's position for herself. Everyone knows that. She literally just said that, so yes. She is very capable. But her intellect is burdened by a quick temper. <laughs> I'll retire when she's achieved a better balance. He's so sweet. This Stellaron thing is easy. Blade escaped. Now we gotta go get him. Just say the word, and I'll solve this in a flash. The voice grates. Not only really because it sounds like a child's voice, which irritates me in general, but considering how mature... Quotation marks mature. Just older and more sophisticated voices we have here. We have Ting Yun to an extent. We have Yu Kong. We have Jing Yuan. And now we have this, like, childlike comedic voice coming through it just doesn't seem to match the tone of both the scene and the world i think it's very out of place i can understand your impatience and i know you want to prove yourself now is not the time if you truly wish to become sword champion you shouldn't be running around brandishing your sword at people especially not a major criminal you think i'd lose to blade yes I'm saying you need to have patience, Yan Ching. Governing Xianzhou is different from a sword fight. The only way to build momentum is to work slowly. Besides, we still don't know who's really moving the chess pieces. There is something we must take care of before making our next move. As long as it remains unresolved, we're at a stalemate. That something is the Stellaron. How did it manage to bypass the Skyfaring Commission's inspections and the Divination Commission's predictions? Where is it now? Maybe it's either in a realm you can't see on the Lofu, or it's within the Lofu. It's probably neither of those, but they're two suggestions that come to mind. I say we bring those two Stellaron hunters before Diviner Fu. She'll get an answer out of them in no time. I've asked our friends from the Express to take care of that for us. Worry not, you'll have your moment when the current stalemate is broken. You are my most trusted aide. And there are some things that I would only assign to you. Speaking of which, Yang Ching. <sighs> that boy. 
I don't find him particularly trustful at all, actually, if he's just walking off while his commander is telling him something. That's not really what I would want in my closest age. I aid. suppose it is my fault. I should have given him an opportunity already. A sharp sword can't stay sheathed forever. <laughs> my fear was that this might prove too big a setback. Bigger than his exuberance. That's my problem with him. He seems too passionate and exuberant is yes a right word for it and then he's overstating his capabilities i mean he's kicking butt on my team but i feel like having not been tried his confidence far out uh, far, far exceeds his his skill set and that if we actually do put him in this particular situation where his skills are tested he may find that he's not up to the task and that would be quite a blow to his uh, confidence 